So there definitely will be circumstances where changes to the permissions need to be made. Because remember, by default, the owner is going to get permissions, the owner's group is going to get a little bit of permissions, but that's pretty much it. So we want to make sure that we can go in and make changes. Well, by default, only the root user or the file owner is going to be able to make those changes. So that associated user will use the chmod or change mod to make the modifications to the files themselves and their associated permissions. Now there's actually two pieces to this. We can use numeric or symbolic mode when assigning permissions. Now the numeric mode is exactly what it sounds like. chmod 740 and then the associated file would give full control to the owner, read-only permissions to the group, and everybody else would get no permissions. So the syntax here is actually pretty easy. So let's take a look at an example of this. As it stands right now, I actually have another user. And I'm going to change over to that user real quick, VTC user. Ah, well, we'll create this user. So to create that user, we'll simply type user add VTC user. Take it just a second. And I'm going to use the sue command, which is basically the change user command, to go ahead and jump over to the VTC user. Now, just as an example, I'm going to get permissions denied here. And that means that, hey, you're in a folder where you don't even have permissions to view the file. So I basically have the number zero or no permissions on this directory. And the reason being is I am currently the VTC user, but I'm in the root home folder. So obviously I'm not going to have permissions to that. But if I change over to my home directory, the VTC user home directory, I have permissions to list out the files. So if I create a file, you can see that the file has been created. I even have permissions to create it, make changes to it, etc. So the permissions are there because I'm the owner and I have the associated permissions. Now if I want to make a change, I can give myself zero permissions. I can give my group full permissions and everyone else full permissions of the example file. Would help if I spelled it correctly. There you go. Now, if I try to, let's say, open up the file, I don't have permissions simply because I've removed those permissions from myself. Now, if I change over to, say, root, for example, and I try to access the example file, I have access to that file because, number one, I'm root, and number two, I am going to be included in that everyone group, and that everyone group has full control. So theoretically, I should be able to delete that file as well. And that file is gone. So that should give you a pretty good idea about how these file permissions and ownership and that whole concept works.